A Raleigh cigarette program from Hollywood, starring Red Skelton with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and Wonderful Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a simple yet conclusive color test. A dependable guide used by experts to determine which tobacco is best. Yes, and it proves beyond question the superiority of Raleigh cigarettes. Compare the open ends of a pack of Raleigh's with any other cigarette. You'll see at a glance the tobaccos in Raleigh's are unmistakably more golden in color. Experts will assure you that these golden tobaccos are choicer, more expensive. There is proof beyond dispute that Raleigh's do give you the very finest quality. And not one alone, but 31 of these superior tobaccos go into Raleigh's, blending their rich seasoning qualities into one distinctive flavor. No other cigarette can boast a more careful blend. No other cigarette gives you Raleigh's unrivaled richness, smoothness, mildness. Raleigh's give you valuable coupons too, redeemable for over 70 luxury premiums, including United States defense stamps. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it pays in many ways to smoke Raleigh's. Raleigh cigarettes. and his orchestra playing I Want to Be Happy. And now we bring you Metro Golden Mayor's newest young comedian, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, I feel great tonight. You do, Red? Yeah, been all day with Molly McGee and Mary and Morgan, uh, <laughs> Jordan, you know. Today was St. Patrick's Day, you yeah, know. Yeah, I know it, Red. Say, that St. Patrick must have been a terrific guy, huh? Yeah. Drove all the snakes out of Ireland, you know. Yeah, I wonder if he could do with anything with the wolves in Hollywood. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good old St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, everybody was wearing something green. Yeah. You were wearing something green, weren't you, Red? Yeah, my face. <laughs> Say, what made you sick? That girl I was with. <laughs> yeah, I saw her. Where did you meet her, anyway? Well, uh, she was standing on the corner waiting for, waiting for the sunset bus, and I drove up. Uh-huh. Love at first sight, huh? Yeah, she looked pretty good to me, and my tires looked pretty good to her. <laughs> Hello, Red. Hello, Harriet. Say, I saw you in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Yes, I was all in green. Yeah, I'll say you were in green. <laughs> the guy next to me took one look at you and your sister walking along, and he nudged me, and he says, Gosh... Look at the size of that watermelon next to that pickle. I saw your uncle marching in the parade, Red. Yeah. Boy, was he high. Yeah, he's about three feet under the B-19. <laughs> oh, but the parade was swell, though. It went great up until the, uh, the time they came to a certain corner. We had a brickyard on one side and a saloon on the other side. What happened, Red? Fifteen minutes, they changed places. <laughs> <laughs> and they weren't even puffing. My breath came in short pants once. <laughs> really, Ozzy? Yes, I was kissing my girl goodnight, yeah. and I bent her back, father, father, and then something came between us. Yeah? What was it? The sidewalk. She fell down a manhole. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking, St. Patrick must have had quite a job chasing the snakes out of Ireland. I was a snake in the grass once. <laughs> You were, Ozzy? Yes, but I gave it up. It was too hard on the stomach. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Red, did you pick a shamrock from your lawn? Shamrock? I can't even find any grass. <laughs> why, why not? Well, I don't know, but every morning a gopher comes out of his hole, looks around, and says, I came, I saw, I conquered. <laughs> Well, 
Well, it sure was a great day for the Irish. Yeah. <laughs> they, and to top everything off, I threw a party at my house. Oh, was it open house? No, but it is now. <laughs> I served some Irish punches. Irish punch? What's yeah. that? <laughs> well, one gr drink and you, you sprout green wings and a harp. <laughs> <laughs> Say, did anything exciting happen? Yeah, we almost had a blackout right in the middle of the party. How come? Well, Ozzy found a siren in his Cracker Jack box. <laughs> 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 Say, Harry, did you enjoy dancing with me? Hmm? I say, did you enjoy dancing with me? Oh, hold my crutch and I'll tell you. Oh, <laughs> uh, did I step on your toes much? Oh, uh, no, you didn't step on my toes. No? In fact, all the time we were dancing, you never stepped down off my knees. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was some party anyhow. I laughed so much I thought I'd die. <laughs> I had an uncle died once in a saloon. <laughs> Your uncle died in a saloon? How? He strangled to death trying to wash some potato chips down with popcorn. <laughs> you know, I'll have to admit your party was a swanky affair, Ray. Yeah, I'll say. Everybody there was wearing tails, or should have been. <laughs> but I made one big mistake. I invited all of Ozzy's musicians. That's all, brother. <laughs> knew people ate like that before. Yeah. <laughs> Harriet brought in a midnight snack. Yeah, please. what happened? Well, my dog took one look at the musicians eating, <laughs> went outside and buried his bones six feet deep. <laughs> Said Pat McGee, now listen to me I've heard you fellas brag About your beauties over there And the gals you love so dear That may be swell, that's all very well Wearing fancy clothes But I have a queen, a fair Colleen As sweet as any rose Oh, laddie buck, oh, laddie buck Listen to my repose Along the rocky road to Dublin I was swinging along, I was singing a song With joy my heart was bubbling With Cadelia by me side Sure every time I looked into those devilish eyes of blue I couldn't help but feel very proud That I am Irish too All me thoughts of dear old Dublin Seem to carry me back to that rickety shack How I long to be there once again one says before, sure, only to love Cadelia more Along the rocky road to Dublin The rocks and wills and old wishing wells We passed along the way among the shamrock-covered hills Sure it set me heart to thrill And all the while we sat on the stile We kissed and kissed and kissed A whisper, lad, the heart she had was bigger than your fist Oh, laddie buck, oh, laddie buck, think of what ye missed. Along the rocky road to Dublin, I was swinging along, I was singing a song. But joy, me heart was bubbling with McGinty by me side. Sure, every time I looked into those devilish eyes of blue, I couldn't help but feel very proud that I am Irish too. And all me thoughts of dear old Dublin seem to carry me back to that rickety shack. How I long to be there once again. Once as before, sure, only to love McGinty more along the rocky road to Dublin. Rocky, rocky road to Dublin. Yes, that was the rocky road to Dublin, sung by Harriet Hilliard and Horsey Nelson. <laughs> An arrangement, uh, was, which was arranged, number arranged by Old Feinberg. <clears throat> and very good, too. Well, look who came in. Wonderful Smith. What's up, Wonderful? Hi, Mrs. Skelton. Can uh, I use your telephone? Use the telephone? Yes, sir. I'm going to a formal party tonight, and I want to tell my mom to lay out a complete change of socks. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to a party? 
Yeah. Do I look all right dressed like this? I mean, uh, do this suit, suit fit my personality? Yeah. One, of, one of those zoot suits. <laughs> yeah, well, what difference does it make? Well, it's the party. Yeah. You see, you have to wear the clothes to fit your personality. You do? Yeah, and my gal has got me worried. Why? No personality. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny. Almost everybody likes to look well, and those that don't, at some time or other, are forced to uh, dress up. So let's look in on different people, and I'll show you just what I mean. First, we have Clem, the fellow from the country, who's on his way to see his girl, Daisy June. She's told him never to come back unless he spruced himself up. So let's look in and see what happens. Well, here I am on my way to see my girl. Oh, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. Do, 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 do. I want to look nice for her tonight. I better pull my socks up. Mm. Sure is tough getting them over my shoes. I wonder if she's home. I'll knock on the door. No, no. That's what we get for not rehearsing this. <laughs> I forgot, I'll ring the bell. That was changed, wouldn't it? Hello, Clem. Will Deasy eat you? You know, when you first see me, you always sound like a vibrator. <laughs> What you coming over here for? Well, I thought I'd come over and listen to your radio. <laughs> you listen to the radio all the time, don't you? Yeah, I even wrote a letter to the What's My Name program. <laughs> what happened? Nothing. They didn't know what they meant. <laughs> Gee, you look pretty, Daisy June. Your cheeks are so nice and rosy. Well, thank you, Clem. Yep, that Mercurochrome sure makes you look good. <laughs> Can I come in, Daisy June? Nope. Told you not to come back till you're spruced up. Oh, Look at your hair. It's yeah, awful. It is. Why don't you do something about your hair? What do you want me to do? Plow it under? <laughs> well, would you like me to cut it? Well, how would you do that? Put a bowl over my head? No, nope, I think with your head, I'll use a funnel. <laughs> you mean my head comes to a point? Yep, in two places. <laughs> Let me look at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say, what's that sticking out behind your ear? Nothing. Just some bubble gum I ain't whipped yet. <laughs> well, come on in. Okay. I'll give you a shave, too. A shave? Sure. I shaved my pappy once, you know. I know, but he was dying anyway. <laughs> Now, just sit down. But be careful. One of them chairs is about ready to fall apart. Oh. Uh -oh. Was that the chair? Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, Clem, you're so dumb. No, I wouldn't say that. When I was in the third grade, I was voted by my class as the one most likely to stay there. <laughs> You don't like me. Oh, just... I like you. you do. But you look awful. You look tired. Yo, I am. I get up every morning at the crack of midnight. You get up at midnight? Why? Yeah. Well, I look silly stealing tires in broad daylight. <laughs> now, just sit back and relax. I'm ready to shave you. Right. I'll strop the razor first. Okay. Don't strop it any bit. Oh, my, I must be nervous. Look, I just cut the strap right in half. Ain't that a scream? <laughs> Clem, mm -hmm. what you looking at me so funny for? Clem, what are you trying to say? With that razor in your hand, oh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> well, hold still while I take a swipe at your jaw. Okay. Don't. <laughs> Well, what do you know? You missed me a mile. I'll try it again. Okay. What are you using, a Jeep? Oh, Clem, I think I cut you. Let me see, let me see. Oh, well, it's all right. I always wanted a pug nose anyway. You did, Clem? 
Yeah, but you sort of overdid it. Now it's more pug than nose. <laughs> We have a lady and her little boy. She's scrubbing. She's scrubbing for an hour, and now they're on the way to the barber shop. So, Harriet, you beat my mother, and I'll beat a mean little kid, huh? <laughs> hippity hop, hippity hop. We off, we off to the barber shop. Junior, stop kicking that tin can. You'll wear out the tips of your shoes doing that. I already wore them out. I'm working on the meat now. <laughs> Oh, Junior, you're a bad boy. Yes, Why do you worry me so much? You worry me too, Mommy. I worry you. Yeah, every time I do something, I never know whether I'm going to get a whipping or not. <laughs> hey, Mommy, what are you taking me? I'm taking you to the barber shop to have that chewing gum cut out of your hair. Yeah. Hey, you going to have all me long red curls cut off? No. Why do you want your long red curls cut off? Well, every time I walk past the corner, all the fellas call me Rodo Day. <laughs> All the time they do. Well, here's the barber shop. Oh, look at that big dick of peppermint candy. <laughs> Junior, stop licking that barber pole. <laughs> Why, my tongue is clean. <laughs> I'm going across the street to the beauty parlor. Beauty parlor? So you go on in the barber shop and wait for me. Oh, boy, beauty shop, pretty girls. I will go with you, Mary. You can't go with me. Now, you let me go with you, I will tell. You'll tell what? I would tell everybody that you got a, a sugar racing card under your maiden name, too. Junior! I did not. Yes, you did. At three different places, too. I know. Oh, I now you're going to get it. Oh, you hit me. Oh, you broke my little neck. You broke my little neck. Oh, you hit me. Oh, my little neck. I didn't touch your neck. Yes, you did, because there's the brood right above the high water mark. <laughs> now, you go on and get into that barber shop. Okay, okay. Sometimes I wonder why I don't leave home and get a job at Lockheed. <laughs> well, here I is, all alone. So brace yourself, folks. <laughs> Look at me, a fine thing. A widow man like me wearing curls. I wonder if I could talk to Barbara into cutting all my hair off. <laughs> it wouldn't take very long. Just a sniff here and a snap there. I bet he could do it before Mommy got back, too. I bet he could. If I do, I get a whipping. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Once and for all, I would put a stop to this hello little girl stuff. Hello, Mr. Barber. Oh, hello there, little girl. You see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what a life. What a life. Uh, what do you want, a haircut? Well, I didn't come in here to bet on the horses. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what kind of a haircut do you want? Huh? I want I want one of them G.I. haircuts. <laughs> a G.I. haircut? What's that? Well, it looked like a fire break, only more so. <laughs> Ah, you sure have quite a bushy head of hair there. Yeah, from a distance, I look like a victory garden with legs. <laughs> On second thought, I can't cut your hair without permission from your mother or father. You couldn't? No. Oh, well, I got a note here from my mommy for you to cut me hair off. Oh, fine. Well, let's see the note. The note, the note. Let's see. What did I do with that note? Here's a slingshot. Comes in mighty handy making fat people walk faster. <laughs> Here's a water pistol I use to put out candles during blackout. Here's me frog. And here he legged. <laughs> what do you know? He came apart. <laughs> and a check for a short root beer. <laughs> well, well, what do you know? No, no. <laughs> well, I don't suppose you'd be here unless your mother sent you. No, that's okay, right. I'll put this board across the arms of the chair for you yeah. to sit on. Don't you hit You're me, don't. Just a little fellow. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little guy. All right, now, upsy daisy. <clears throat> I, it's bigger than I sound, ain't I? Let's say you are. Tell me, how come you're so heavy? My mummy said I got a cat on tummy. <laughs> are you going to serve lunch? Well, no, why? Well, what you putting that bib around me neck for? <laughs> oh, that. Well, that's so all the hairs won't go down your neck. Oh. Hey, why you at? Give me a shave, too, will you? <laughs> Now, uh, you don't need a shave on your face. Not on me face, on me head. <laughs> what 
why, if I shave your head, you look like a convict. Oh, that's all right. I don't want to make Pop feel self-conscious when we visit him. <laughs> you be quiet, please, okay. and don't wiggle around. Okay. If I were to cut you, I'd faint. D would you really faint? Yeah. Yes, I would. Now, you don't want that to happen, do you? You don't know me very well, do you? <laughs> Hey, douse the light quick. I hear an unidentified plane. No, no. That's only the electric clippers. Oh. Hey, what are you doing up there? It's getting awful drafty. Well, I cut one whole side off. Let me see, let me see. There you are. Gee, don't I look funny. Boy, I better not go near that pool room. Somebody will bank me in a tide pocket. <laughs> Let's get the other side. Okay, now, okay. Now, now hold still, will right. you? <laughs> that tickled me. Oh, stop. That tickled me with a skull. Will you please stop laughing? <laughs> you better let me enjoy myself because when mommy gets here. <laughs> yeah, now, wait a minute. What will happen when mommy gets here? I'll give you three guesses and they had all bloodshed. <laughs> I'm all finished. Now, here, look at yourself in the mirror. Okay, let me see. Well, do you like it? Yeah! <laughs> hey, what is you, an Indian? You jumped me. I don't like me that way. Put it back. <laughs> put it back. You can't put it back once it's been cut off. Now he tells me. <laughs> boy come in here? Uh, just this one, madam. Oh, that isn't him. My, what a stupid-looking child. <laughs> hey, how do I look, Mommy? Junior, can that be you? Yeah, look, no hair. <laughs> what happened to your head? Scorched earth policy. saving your Raleigh cigarette coupons. Well, you bet I have, Truman, and I'm going to redeem them for defense stamps, too, just as you suggested. So, incidentally, how do I go about it? Well, Ozzie, just as other luxury Raleigh premiums. Simply take them or send them to your nearest Brown & Williamson premium exchange. You know, there are Brown & Williamson premium exchange stores in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Louisville, and New York. Okay, Truman, I'll surely do that. And, ladies and gentlemen, you'll enjoy Raleigh's smoothness, mildness, the golden goodness of their rich tobacco blend. And you'll enjoy saving those valuable Raleigh coupons, redeemable for more than 70 luxury premiums, including United States defense stamps. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today more than ever before, it pays in many ways to smoke Raleigh's. The pack with a coupon on the back, Raleigh cigarettes. And now getting back to people who have to be coaxed to get dressed up, we have Deadeye, 
A tough cowboy who's wanted by the sheriff, dead or else. <laughs> and riding back to Poison Creek to get all dolled up for his girl, we find... Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, I said! <laughs> I'm sorry, horse. I was going to count three. <laughs> but either way, you're still a dead horse. <laughs> hey, where's the barber? Well, he ain't with us anymore. He no? had a little accident. Next shot? No, he caught his nose in a roulette wheel and broke his neck. <laughs> we buried him yesterday. Yeah. Well, dig him up. I need a shave. <laughs> Oh, I'm the new barber. You're the new barber, huh? Okay, give me a hot towel, will you? Oh, uh, we're all out of hot towels. How about a warm Kleenex? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little soggy, but okay. Sign, mister? Yeah, I gotta look good. I'm gonna see my gal. <clears throat> what are you so happy about? Man, man, did you see that reward for catching that dead eye? Yeah, what would you do with that $25,000 if you caught him? Nothing. For the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Would you be afraid to tackle a tough hombre like that? Who, me? Yeah. Afraid of that no-good outlaw? Why, he's so yellow, he'd make a Jap look good. <laughs> if that was possible. Suppose I was dead-eye, would you know him? Why, sure, I... Uh-oh. Oh, but, but you ain't dead-eye. Yeah. Uh, uh, dead-eye was toting two guns. I'm toting two guns. Yeah, but dead-eye had old, dirty clothes. I got dirty old clothes. Yeah, but Mr. Dead-eye, he, he had a face like yours. I got a face like mine. <laughs> there, you see. You couldn't be dead-eye. Come here. Oh, uh, no, now take it easy, Mr. Dead-eye. Uh, don't you know it's bad manners to point with a gun? Come here, brother. You know the law of the West. Keep your mouth closed. Oh, I knows the law of the West. I was born on the range. Yeah? And it was mighty hot. <laughs> How come? The pilot light was on. <laughs> Say, did I look who's coming over here? Your girl, Calamity Jane. Yeah. Did I? Hi. Did I? You gotta get out of town. The sheriff's coming after you with a posse. Posse? What's that? <laughs> you know, a gang of men out after that reward. Reward? What's that? A price on your head. My head? What's that? I could answer that, but it'd only lead to bloodshed. Bloodshed? That I know. Come on, did I? There ain't much time. Oh. Why don't you disguise yourself by taking a bath or something? Who, me? Well, then, get a shave. Your face looks like the bottom end of a carpet sweeper. That's a good idea. Hey, barber, get my mug and shave me. Okay, which is your mug, the pewter one? Huh? I say, which is your mug, the pewter one? Yeah, I got a pewter mug in I gal. Oh, it's too late. Here comes the sheriff now. Yeah, we're tripped. Come on, gal. If McCarthy, uh, Mac MacArthur can get out of Batan, we can get out of here. Come on. Oh, what about the barber? He'll squeal. Oh, no, he won't. Let me hit my shooting arms. Now, don't shoot me, dead eye. You give me a break. Okay, we'll be fair and square about this. Now, I'll count three, and then I'll shoot. You ready? We'll draw. You ready? One, two, three. Uh, he'd have never beat me to the draw anyway. <laughs> Come on, we'll go through the back window. Oh, no, you don't. Stand where you is, Mr. Deadeye. You're poor. You ain't got no gun. No, but I got a razor. No, oh, I ain't fighting no razor, man. You got me. Hello, Deadeye. Hello, Sheriff. What do you know? I don't know nothing. What do you know? I don't know nothing. What do you know? I don't know nothing. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Sheriff. Nice work there, wonderful. How did you nab him? Take that razor, razor away from him. I'm scared of death of a razor. Uh, you know, Mr. Stead, I, you didn't have no right to be scared of that razor. I didn't, why not? I couldn't find no place to plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> That's Ozzie Nelson playing Thank Your Lucky Stars and Stripes. That's just what you'll be doing if you take the advice Del King has for you now. Pipe smokers for the very best in smoking tobacco get Sir Walter Raleigh. It's smooth and mild, packed with a rich nut-like mellowness. Sir Walter Raleigh never bites your tongue. It burns even and cool right down to the bottom of the bowl because it's a perfect blend of selected burleys, carefully cured and aged and precisely crimp cut. And the aroma of Sir Walter Raleigh is always welcome. Try the quality pipe tobacco of America tonight. Sir Walter Raleigh. 
Remember, we'll all be back again next week at the same time. Red Skelton, Oz Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and your announcer, Truman Bradley. Until next week, then. This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now. Thanks for listening. And smoke a roller. Red Skelton is heard on this program by arrangement with Metro Golden Mayor Studios. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.